Hi guys and welcome to our tutorial videos for our latest iteration of our IFP 50 series, our IFP 50-3. So as Louis says, this is our third generation of the 50 series screen and what we have for you this time is a brand new user interface where we've designed everything from scratch to make all of our items and accessories as easy to reach as possible. For example, this time, instead of having all the apps on a separate page, they are stored now in a tray that sits on the home screen. What I can do from here is take any of my favorite apps and drag them and drop them onto my favorites bar in the same fashion as within the previous iterations. So we also have our usual floating toolbars, one on each side. So depending on which side of the screen you're using, it's really quick for you to select um, to go home or to select different apps. Um, if you wanted to maybe select an application while on this side of the screen, instead of having to move back over there, you can actually press the app button and bring up the app tray directly from either side of the toolbar. In order to make your experience easier and more accessible, we've put a side toolbar on the side of the screen. In here, there are some shortcuts to some of the key features that you'll need to access throughout your time using the boards. For example, Along the side here, we've got a return button, a home button, a tabs icon, which will work slightly like a phone if you want to close programs. Below there, we've also got another shortcut to all our apps. Underneath there, we've also got some other key features that you might use for your interactivity. For example, we've got a shortcut to our digital whiteboarding software, My View Board. Underneath there, we've also got a screen capture, which will allow you to record anything that's occurring on the screen in real time. And finally, at the bottom, there is a digital overlay pen, which will allow you to annotate over any program that you're currently utilizing. So for example, we can do that. Once we've removed it, those annotations will disappear and we can continue with our activity. So if we just have a look over on my side, I've got my toolbar here as well. And some of you may be familiar with some of the timer tools and different um, apps that we have also on the previous toolbar. So if you press the little three dots on the bottom of the toolbar, you get these extra options. So over here we have a freeze button. So this will freeze the screen if you want to just keep everything on the display as it is. We've got a spotlight. So this allows you to move around and reveal different items on the screen. Um, we've got our timers here. So we've actually got a, a stopwatch time. We can just uh, run that and put that in the background. Or if you want to set your own timer, we can also do that as well. So here I can actually set uh, a timer for the class, set an activity and off we go. If we want to utilize different inputs with the board, they will appear along this bottom tray here. As you can see, we have an integrated PC. If I select this particular icon, that will take us over to our integrated PC. As you can see here, we've got a Windows Core i5 PC slotted in. If I want to return back to my um, original home screen, we can use that shortcut menu to just click the home button and return back to where we started. So another way to do your input selection is to actually use the toolbar and go right down to the bottom here and you've got this extra option here for input select. And this is slightly different. This actually gives you a picture in picture display. So imagine you maybe have uh, your laptop connected and maybe an integrated PC as well. I can really quickly see by selecting the different inputs what's on each display. So it just gives me a nice way to find um, you know, those inputs really quickly. So in this case, I can go back to the PC. Uh, I can select that and then he here I'm back in my PC. Again, if I wanted to go home, I can press the home button as Louis did before, or I go back to my input select and maybe I go to HDMI 1 or go back to the home on the view board. Just like that. Our new operating system has shortcuts for the internet connectivity features on the view board. For example, as you can see here at the bottom, we have the options to connect either via an ethernet or wirelessly. As you can see, if we click on this shortcut, we're not currently connected via the ethernet cable. However, we are connected to the Wi-Fi using our additional slot in Wi-Fi module. So the Wi-Fi module is an optional accessory that you need to order as a separate uh, or additional product with your view board. And this actually slots into the side of the panel on this right side here. 
And another way you can actually get to the Wi-Fi or Ethernet settings is actually using the dedicated settings application. So in this example, our settings is in our favorites menu. Um, but what you may need to do is just press on this button to reveal all the apps and just go to the settings icon. And then you'll see the first thing is wireless and network. And here you have more options for your Wi-Fi and also your Ethernet settings, as well as the extra options for uh, turning this into a wireless hotspot as an access point, and also your Bluetooth and VPN settings. Our new operating system, View OS, comes pre-installed with My View Board Whiteboard for Android. This is a great place to have a digital whiteboarding experience, running activities from the class, making annotations, and generally having a nice board in order to scribble and make annotations on. So as you'll notice, the first time you actually use uh, My View Board Whiteboard for Android, it will ask you to activate. Now, you should already have um, a user account set up. If you don't already, contact your administrator to make sure that you've got um, your user accounts registered. You can also sign up on www.myviewboard.com. Um, but yeah, please check with your IT administrator in your organization as you may already have an account. So here we have the option for personal or entity. I'm going to choose personal. And here we have the option to give this viewboard a name. So this is the name of the device, maybe your classroom name or your room name. And then all you need to do is type in your registered email address um, and then type that in again just to confirm it. You can choose between education, business, public sector and sports. This just changes the theme and, and the UI a little bit of the software. Um, once you've got your selection, hit submit and then your software should be automatically activated. So the new View OS has a brand new built-in feature called My Viewboard Records. This allows you to screen capture your viewboard display and create an MP4 video file. Now there's two different ways for you to actually do this. The first one is using the side toolbar. Open the toolbar and you'll see you have a camcorder button. If I just press on that, you will then have the option to select your resolution. So this one is uh, set to 720p. If I press the tick here, I then get a countdown. So three, two, one. Now everything is being recorded on the display. So Louis, if you'd like to load up the whiteboards. So what we have here is just a couple of slides that are annotated that we can flip between, and then at the same time we can ensure that that's being captured by our screen recorder. So if you look down at the bottom right corner here, you can see our timer. I can actually pause the video, maybe make some adjustments. I can then unpause and carry on recording. And then finally, when you're ready, just press on the stop button. This will generate the video preview, so you can just check that everything is as you want it. If you're then happy with that, just click on the screen, press on the save floppy disk icon over here, choose your folder, so I'm just going to go into the movies uh, folder here, and then you just need to give your file a name, and then press the tick, and then your file is saved on the viewboard. The second way to access the screen recorder is by simply opening the app tray and scrolling down to the screen recording app and tapping it like so. This is the same process, so you get the same menu. Just choose your resolution, press the tick, after you go you can save your video file. 